I'm pausing the game. Alright guys, hello and welcome back to game number two between uh, NC and uh, CZ or CZ and NC if you want to go by the scoreboard. And if you read left to right, um, so far the score is 1-0 to NC and they are uh, doing pretty well. Actually, I mean, that was a very good first game from them. They were obviously very coordinated, good teamwork. And, I mean, you could say the same for CZ as well, but I think they just didn't quite have what it ta what it took there. I feel like um, CZ with the no team wall, that was probably their biggest mistake. And had they have done that, that game could have been completely different. But I did like the high aggression that both teams showed. And it wasn't just a, a full boom and a race to the Imperial Age. It was, um, you know, action from action from the Castle Age onwards. But you know what Land Nomad is like. It is a slower paced game. And, uh, well, we skipped through the start of it anyway. So you, you guys got to the action pretty quickly. We got to the action pretty quickly. Uh, so anyway, this game now is game number two, and uh, game number one is done and dusted. It is in the past. Game number two is where it's at, and this map is Ancient Lake version four, and uh, well, the one strat map, it is dubbed the one strat map. It's uh, basically grushing, and, uh, and unfortunately, yeah, it is basically going to be that, but we will see if any landing attempts come in. Uh, or not and uh, usually that kind of stuff you know when we watch the tyrant uh, legends play they were so far ahead of their, their their opponents when they played on this map that they landed really early and stuff like that and that's kind of understandable because they can get away with it they, they're so far ahead that they can get away with it but in this situation when you've got two teams that are probably much closer together in terms of rating and skill then uh, yeah, uh, I I don't know if uh, if it's gonna ever be a, a quick landing on this in this situation, or if it's gonna be just a case of galley warring it out. But let's see who we've got on both of these teams. Then off to the west of the map in the yellow, we've got Skittle once again playing as the Huns here. Uh, in the pocket position, we've got Johnny Walker playing in the teal as the Japanese. In the other pocket for NC, we've got NC and Doran switching out, it seems, for, um, oh, who was it? Pedro. Uh, he's switched pe for Pedro here. Sorry, and Doran has switched from Pedro. Uh, so he's playing in the Mongols as the green. And on that uh, other flank position on the southeast of the map uh, for the NC team, we've got Sue Nilpford playing as the Vikings uh, over here. So we've got Vikings on this right flank. Worth noting that. So on the uh, other side of the map, on uh, the CZ team in the grey, we've got Yannick playing as the Huns uh, off to the sort of northwest there. Uh, the pocket position for those guys, we've got CB, C, C, CB, that's definitely not a B, that's a CZ. C, CZ Trabant playing in the blue as the Japanese. In the other pocket position, we've got Era in the red playing as the Mongols. And last but not least, on that flank position for the uh, CZ team, we've got Exit in the orange playing as the Vikings. So Vikings here actually um, both next to each other on the flank, and that's uh, that's good. We get to see a lot of Viking action. We get to see a one-on-one -on -one between uh, Nupford and between Exit, see how they do. So I think this map still was a lot better when it was uh, when it had the shallows going across. I I think maybe if they added the shallows back in but made them wider and put them across here, we'd still see walling. I'm pretty sure we'd still see walling, but I don't know. It might it might just uh, lead to something. Yannick in the north here, not a great start. Uh, I don't know. Obviously his villagers are being stupid today. Um, you've seen it happen when I play all the time. Yannick's having the same problems it seems. Very nearly losing that villager there as well. But taking two sheep simultaneously, taking two boars simultaneously, and this sheep has got 80 food on it. This has got 54 and it's rotting away. A lot of wasted food here and that's not good really, is it? Uh, we expect better, Mr. Yannick. This should be, this should be top performance. So this should be top dollar. But uh, yeah, obviously taking two sheep at once not ideal in the slightest. And it seems like everyone else is trying to take their deer at the moment as well. Aside from actually Exit, who's taking three sheep at once. I mean, he's loving it at the moment. He's getting all the sheep. Uh, but yeah, this deer going to be really crucial to try and lure them in if you can. And we've got Nilp for doing that in the south now, getting that second ball as well. And this looks a lot cleaner for him, I've got to say. If we compare looking at this TC versus this TC, um, there's no deer here. There's, there's a couple of sheep on the way, on the go at once. But Nilpford's looking pretty, pretty efficient at the moment. And that's going to be the, the vital thing. It's the, the feudal time. 
is so vital on this map. Now we've got two fishing ships out for most players. The third one is just coming out uh, around about this time. And uh, it's a race to feudal. It's a race to see who can get the galleys out first. And You know, I've got to say we have seen this map a few times before. And we've seen um, longboats in one of the games. So that was a pretty exciting thing. Uh, it's not very often you get to see longboats. But we did. And uh, we were we were so lucky to see that. It was it was a good moment. Maybe, maybe we'll see something like that again here. Who knows? But uh, I would like to see something along those lines. So notice as well, Nipford here. No, no loom or anything like that. He's uh, not not... Doing loom. Loom is for the weak. Who needs loomed coats when you can have unloomed coats and extra gold in the bank to make more uh, more galleys with? Uh, we'll see if loom has been done by any of these guys. In fact, it's unlikely. And as a result, it does make it a little bit more difficult to lure those boar. And Trabant here, Janik here, both making or doing a loom so far. And this is another big thing now. Look at this. Janik in the north. He's got no sheep left at all. He's got the two underneath his town center, but they're going to rot away because he's not taking them. So Yannick, if we have a quick look, here, on the way up to field, 200 food in the bank. Now, if we have a look at Nilpford down here, he's got 150 food in the bank, but he's still got four sheep. So he's not going to have to build a mill or anything for quite a while because once he gets up to the feudal age here, he's still got those four sheep. He can very easily just take them under the TC and get some extra food income from that before he getting to build a mill. Now Yannick is probably, okay, he has one sheep, but he's probably going to want to build a mill reasonably soon after reaching feudal so that he can keep villager production going because he might not have enough food income if he's not careful. Uh, but feudal age for Skittle, feudal age for Yannick now. A few age for everybody else at some point in the next few seconds. And those galleys coming out from three docks for pretty much everyone. It's going to be close to... Well, we want to keep a close eye on seeing the fourth dock. But hey, look at that. That's what we want to see. Error. With the, the uh, transport ship, the quick, fast transport ship. And this is beautiful. Look at this. CZ, all four of them, sending their scouts over in a single transport ship. This has got to be some new meta or something. This is fantastic. Wow. Got to love that. Got to love that. So that transport going to make it across. And suddenly, you're going to have four scout cavalry, which are all upgraded in feudal age now. Which means that they all have plus two attacks. So that's five attack on each one. And they are going to hopefully be very coordinated here. And uh, maybe pick off some villagers. See what they can find. Do some damage. And of course this is going to mean that NC will have to react to this by bringing their own scouts over. Inevitably all of their scouts are going to be a little bit out of position. But we got uh, Cutlers of the Rainbow over this side. That was fantastic play by CZ. And it looks like they might just lose that transport ship there. Um, or not. Wow. It's going to get back and it's going to be... Gonna make it back safe and sound. And uh, so far, so far, Nilkford's lost his scout. And these guys are gonna get head over there, keep keep going over there with their um, scout cavalry to see what they can find. Gonna probably pick off a villager here. This uh, scout is uh, safe um, attacking that villager. Uh, I imagine that villager is gonna be lost. And this is some really e early eco harassment from CZ. It's beautifully done. It's it's fantastic. Uh, well done by them. Obviously. On the water, this could cause CZ to lose a little bit, but they're actually looking like they're pretty strong on both flanks. We've got both uh, pocket players supporting their corresponding flanks here, but it does look like uh, in the south, NC are going to get a slight advantage against Exit and uh, Error. But those scouts on the back of the map here still doing damage, hitting those gold collectors, but oh, Yannick losing his scout because it got stuck. But that one there, that villager on 8 health, Error is right close by, but he's not going to go for it, which is sad. That is very sad. Uh, NC and Doran managing to take out the rest of these scouts back here by the looks of it. But yeah, this villa this this scout's coming in. He's going to spot that village there with 8 health, and surely he's going to go for that one. Instead, he's going to go for the one with a little more. But he might get a couple of villager kills here, and if and Doran loses yet another two villagers, this scout may as well just focus, focus the right villager. Come on, she's got 8 health, you can do it, but ah, he's messed it up a slightly there, he's gonna have to go back, but 3 health, but that's, what, 2 villagers down for Andorin already, uh, that's a good advantage for CZ at the moment, a little bit of extra resource income, meaning that they might get ahead with the, with the whole galley shebang in the middle of the map, so fantastically done, this is probably gonna delay things like fletching as well for the NC team, and uh, obviously those upgrades are really pivotal on water fights, Nobody has fletching yet, but we'll keep a close eye to see 
who does that first and whoa five docks here from exit that's a lot of docks obviously a hugely important thing to get the water control error on four uh, we've got four out for Trabant as well and we've got four out for, for Yannick but that's five docks from exit the Viking player um, for NC uh, Nilpford just four docks from him so he's got an extra dock out as uh, Sorry, um, Exit has an extra dock out at the moment. That's some mad, mad production. Four from Andorin. Just the three from Johnny Walker. And then there's five on this top side from Stittle. But like I said, that's pretty huge, actually. And uh, CZ probably have a slight advantage now. There's that plus one attack coming in for most players. And in fact, didn't really delay it for NC at all there. Exit has got it. And uh, Andorin and Ilford's got it. Error does not. And these guys are engaging here whilst um, Error doesn't actually have fletching. So this could be a pretty bad loss for CZ on this right side if they're not careful. In the center of the map though, Trabant's got it. And uh, Johnny Walker is falling right back because he's massively outnumbered. And we've also got uh, Yannick versus Skittle both of these guys with fletching as well now error the last one it seems to get fletching and that's costing them on this south side here but um, I don't know they might they might just hold on they might just hold on they have got units coming over reinforcements uh, coming over quite quickly will they will they stay in or will they go back it looks like yeah uh, NC gonna fall back so really nicely nicely played by uh, CZ at the moment and this is like a really kind of original original play by them even though it's a one one unit war it's kind of it's it's kind of original with the scouts going across so Trabant here gonna snipe those fishing ships from uh, Johnny Walker and uh, that's pretty good play by him as well that's gonna hurt their food income and if we have a look over here, there's that mill we were talking about from Yannick, but he is taking the deer now. Uh, but if we have a look at um, Nilpford, yeah, he's taking those sheep first. He was a little slower, I guess, to get the mill up in the end. But ultimately, ultimately, CZ are ahead at the moment. And we want to have a quick look at that military tab. 21 units killed for Yannick right now compared to the 10 that he's lost. 20 killed for Exit, 14 killed for Trabant. And it's only Error who has a negative or a less than 1 KD ratio at the moment. And that is literally just because he doesn't have fletching, I think. Um, or he'd probably be doing a lot better if he had fletching. All of the NC guys, they are down. Skittle, 9 kills, 21 losses, and uh, probably getting out microed by Yannick at the top by the looks of it. He's seemingly got no galleys on the water. Now, he does have a few inside of his docks. He has a total of 12 galleys, but Yannick has 19, and Skittle's not going to want to leave his docks for a while here. It's a well played by CZ, and uh, they've just got to push and hold their advantage now. There's not really a lot else. They've done a little bit of early eco damage. They've taken out the fishing ships of their enemies or of their opponents and, uh, well, they're not taking them all out, but they're getting there, they're getting there. Um, they're winning the water and they've just got to hold on to what they've got for now. So, error and exit, 17 and, and 13 galleys here, 13 and 12 for Nilpford and Andorin. So, these guys have got the galley advantage, but they're out of position. They need to keep all of their army together. And Nilpford and Andorin here are outnumbered, but obviously... With CZ splitting their units up, it doesn't quite work well in that situation. So Skittle here losing his docks as well. He's got four docks remaining. He did have five. And as a result, he's getting his ships picked off pretty quickly as they come out of those docks as well. Down to three docks now. That's a lot of wasted wood. And it looks like a quick decisive early um, victory almost from CZ on the water. Obviously just losing the water doesn't mean you've lost the game but it usually gives a good indicator of who will be uh, the winner winners of the game. Skittle now trying to build yet another dock trying to get that one back up costing him a little bit of wood slowing down potentially his castle time as well. Uh, meanwhile, Yannick is just going to keep taking them out as Skittle tries to build more and more. Uh, maybe we're going to look for some fishing ships back here, but I don't don't think there's too many for him to kill. There's a few here from Trabant, but uh, not that many. Uh, on the right side, still exit and uh, error with that military number advantage by the looks of things. At the moment, Skittle has the most galleys for NC. Whilst Yannick has the most for CZ with 24. Playing as the Huns there with just the four docks. Really not bad at all from him. 
Uh, so Skipper's trying to go out and do as much damage as he can here. Maybe try and make a run for the Fishers. Charbon not moving them out the way just yet, but uh, he's probably going to lose a lot of these galleys if he's not careful. Um, could end up getting headed off by some more units, but he is going to get the fishing ships, so he's probably got to achieve what he wanted to achieve. But what? What? How did he not get a single fishing ship there? My goodness. Those ships from the Japanese with a little bit of extra pierce armor, of course, 4 plus 2, but wow. I honestly thought that Skittle would have got that, but he didn't. He didn't even get a single one, so he's... Um, Lost quite a lot so far. He's lost 28 units and only killed 12. So Skittle at the moment, yeah, he's gone from hero to zero, quite literally. In that last game, he was just owning it. This time, his KD, not quite what he would like. So try to perhaps get a little bit of a, a communication going with his team. Skittle coming over to this right side, but he's going to get head off, headed off by Yannick now. And that is just bad news for NC. Castle Age upgrade coming in for a few players, but the first one up is going to be Error. And uh, this game, Error, not making any errors at all. He is going to go up to the castle edge there, get that war galley upgrade, and it's just going to help them secure the water even more. But they might consider doing a quick landing now. They might consider something along those lines. Um, obviously, pure water control is pretty much going to win you the game eventually, but there's always a potential for a comeback if you... Uh, if you don't have the water, I guess. You could build castles on the shoreline and things like that, but it's difficult. It's very difficult. So yeah, error there with that uh, castle age upgrade. Uh, him and exit are both going to push forwards on this right-hand side. And we'll just watch him for that war galley upgrade. There it is. Nupford there losing a few galleys pretty quickly as he hits the castle age as well. Of course, he's going to want to run back. He's going to want to get out of harm's way. And Dorin up to castle now as well. You just see his uh, buildings upgrade in there. Uh, so these guys are going to want to run as fast as they can. Not fast enough by the looks of things. But yeah, uh, that means that, that their upgrades are coming in very soon. But will they fight? Well, mm, they might be foolish too because they seem to be outnumbered still by the looks of things. Now... We'll see if there's a university coming up first or not. Doesn't seem like there's a university from error at this point in time. Will we see a university from uh, Nilpford? Yes, we will. Will we see a university from Andorin? Not yet, but the university here could be huge. But these guys now, oh man, Trabant's coming in as well. And that's just horrible. And Doran is trapped back here. Uh, Nilpford trapped back here as well. And They've, they've got nowhere to run right now. They have absolutely nowhere. They've got a choice of either fighting or running through their opponents to get away. And that is not nice. That is never nice. So everything just feels being piled in over on this side. And that's basically all going to get taken down. So that's pretty horrible to see. And I feel bad here for NC as all of this uh, is going to uh, obviously fall. And their dock's probably going to fall pretty soon as well, which is nice for the CZ guys, of course. So obviously all these guys are going to go down. I, I, just, I just wonder now what uh, NC have got up their sleeves. Obviously... Nilpford here doing ballistics, that university costing him all of that wood, that research costing him so much, and now all of a sudden he has no boats left. Uh, that's kind of embarrassing because that's a lot of resources spent on that. Now his economy is going to fall behind in comparison to Error, who went up straight away to two town centers. So Skittle now sending the sling to Nilpford, and Nilpford is basically going to be tasked with the job of bringing this game back to NC here. But it's going to be tough when CZ are taking out his docks so quickly, when they are uh, continuing, well, they're just going to keep the pressure on the docks on the front, basically. So I just kind of feel like at this point, NC are going to have a horrible time getting back into it. As with any water map, it's expected. But Nilford is going to get the sling. He's going to try and make as many galleys as he can. And because he prioritized ballistics, he should be able to put out more damage. Uh, problem is, if we look at that population tab real quickly here, military for Nilford is at 8 at the moment. Error has uh, 14. Exit has 33. And it's going to be a long time before Nilpford manages to get up to 33 or more galleys to push this back. So we've got to keep an eye out for a landing here from some of the uh, CZ team. 
Um, we'll keep an eye out for that landing ship going across. But, I mean, they could quite easily get a landing on Nilpford here. Uh, you know, there's no vision of the shoreline at all. And I know there's a couple of outposts up in the north from Skittle. But in the south, if we have a quick look at Nilpford's fog of war, anything coming down in this corner is going to be spot uh, going to be unseen even. Uh, have a quick look at Johnny Walker here. We can see he's got cartography. Uh, sorry, no, he doesn't have cartography, my bad. I thought he did. Um, he's not going to see anything over that side. I want to see what uh, Skittle can see now. He's got mostly, mostly got vision of the shoreline there, but it's just this side looking a little bit awkward, and we may see a transport going over. We'll quickly check if there are any... Yeah, I see a knight there from Yannick. I wonder if they're going to start transporting across. Uh, nothing in the north at the moment. I'm mean, looking out for those military production buildings for CZ. I think they probably could be faster with a landing here. They, they're pretty much, like I said, got water. But Nilpford still getting that sling. And he's now got 24 military units releasing, releasing the boats from the docks. But uh, the enemy is already there. And he's basically just getting piled onto as soon as these dock boats come out. So obviously those docks now on fire, they're going to fall very shortly. And CZ basically just going to keep taking those docks down. And Nilpford back down to eight military units and falling as well. It's pretty painful for NC at the moment. Pretty damn painful. Uh, worth noting as well that CZ not really, really fishing that hard. And we got a few extra ships out from Exit at the moment. But Nilpford's going to call GG right there. And uh, that's GG from NC. Very well played by the CZ team. I absolutely loved the landing with the scouts. I thought that was brilliant. It uh, obviously threw NC off guard a little bit. It caused them to lose a couple of villagers, which probably really hurt their economy in the early feudal age when that uh, when that galley rush is so crucial to nail. And uh, we had the landing from Yannick there as well coming over after he de uh, destroyed that outpost. But uh, well played by CZ. I mean, they looked really comfortable on the water there. They looked very in control of that game, and uh, no point were they really behind from the Feel Age onwards. And I know Yannick had a little bit of a dodgy uh, Dark Age there, and I know the exit Stark Age didn't look as efficient as Nilpford's, but that landing with the scouts was fantastically done, and uh, definitely cost NC quite a lot. And of course NC then eventually losing the water, and inevitably going on to lose the game. So, well played by CZ. That makes it one all. And CZ going to get their first point on the board here. So, a really exciting start.